I'm told, Craig, that um, not only are you keen on, on Rumi, you've been even dared to make a link between the, uh, the great American sort of soul, Emerson, uh, and Rumi, you see connections there. So there are cultural connections that uh, that we can reach into the faith in its most generic form and find uh, find commonalities. Yeah, and I, f I found this commonality growing up in Massachusetts, um, not necessarily growing up, but when I was in college, I would go home and I would be spending time in Massachusetts and I would pick up books and I would just go into the woods as um, Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau and all these great transcendentalists, essentially Christian mystics did. And as I was reading Emerson and coming across Emerson's thoughts about the transcendental, what our higher calling is, love, uh, universality and humanity, I was struck by the memories that I had of reading Rumi in college. And I was thinking to myself, here are two different individuals from two different centuries in two completely different parts of the world from two different faith traditions, essentially saying the same exact thing. And in the work that I like to do in trying to counter this clash of civilizations, we have a perfect example. Emerson's from Boston. He's a Christian. He's a transcendentalist. He's a Westerner. Rumi is a Muslim from you know, Central Asia and, and so on and so forth. What a beautiful uh, example to touch upon the common ground that can be found in different, not only faith traditions, but different parts of the world, different cultures. Uh, Emerson and Rumi are bridges in and among themselves. And it was a pleasure to include their their poetry in the book. If you actually read the the lines in the book too, it was almost like I was thinking to myself, did Emerson plagiarize Rumi? Obviously, I don't think he did, but the lines were so similar. It was fascinating.